Good afternoon again. Uh, Central City Natural Hazards, recommendation 181, page 131 of your tables. And uh, page 12 uh, for the uh, report, Brigitte's report. Uh, apart from the standardised advice notes that we've got that Peter referred to earlier, um, we've got a, a, a re relatively major um, amendment to address the Minister's concerns about more closely aligning the Central City Natural Hazards section with the Stage 1 proposal, and we propose deleting all the objectives and policies in the section and cross-referencing to those equivalent objectives and policies in the Stage 1 chapter. That's the most significant uh, response. And um, the other recommendation, 181, on page 134 of the table, some other rather minor amendments to address a, uh, an inconsistency in, in reference. We'd referred to a residential zone rather than the specific purpose red, uh, flat land recovery zone um, in respect of the, the high hazard um, provisions. So that's in uh, high flood hazard provisions where uh, land is uh, such a um, uh, subsided or is so sh uh, at a depth where it allows a, a greater than one metre depth of water. So um, effectively that was another uh, little, a minor, relatively minor inconsistency that they pointed out for, and effectively we drew their attention to as well. So, um, and that is effectively it. Thank you very much. Okay. Page 89, a recommendation number 119, that's where it starts. It, and there is a second lot of recommendations which we can deal with at the same time for uh, stage three amendments to open space, uh, chapter 18, which is on page, which start on page 147. A recommendation um, 210. Uh, I will deal with those together because they are very closely linked. Uh, the main thrust of the um, comments from the ministers were around uh, the way we're dealing with biodiversity um, and protection of indigenous flora and uh, fauna. Um, they wanted a little bit more emphasis on um, uh, fauna. Uh, Apart from flora, so um, the policy on um, water open space and water and margins has been amended accordingly to add that emphasis, as well as the protection of uh, biodiversity on the adjacent land and not just within the margins as it would be defined by the definition. So that's the main uh, change there. Um, um, the other change is that in, uh, the ministers were seeking a better integration between chapters and 19, um, coastal environment, eight in uh, chapter nine, or equivalents in the opens in the central city as well, uh, dealing with um, natural and cultural heritage, chapter 18 and six uh, general um, uh, rules, um, general uh, rules and procedures. Uh, that integration again was to do with um, uh, how we deal with uh, protection of specific values or special values of either biodiversity or um, landscapes and special features. In the drafts, we were all, um, uh, in all the chapters, separate chapters, we had rules that would be referring to um, uh, either landscape uh, overlays or um, biodiversity. Now all that has been pulled together into chapter 9 and instead of dealing with, with those issues under respective chapters for other zones, we are relying on chapter 9 to deal with it right across the city. So any references in the uh, other chapters have been removed and that applies to open space as well. So that's not natural and cultural heritage chapter, chapter 9. That's right. Mm -hmm. So that's the main difference, that should simplify um, any cross-referencing to that. Um, uh, another one was a request from the ministers to um, retain or perhaps um, um, reinstate, if you like, the specific purpose um, zoning for Burwood Landfill um, 
uh, site. Uh, initially, the advice we got was that, that it was going to expire in 2016 in accordance with the order that it was created under. However, there was a change of mind and that site is now to be used for um, longer than expected and also long term there are plans to keep it for any unexpected events in the future such as another earthquake or such like. So um, it, it is proposed to remove it from open space natural zoning, which, which was applied to that build um, a landfill site um, as part of the Bottle Lake Forest, um, and that will um, be a specific purpose zone, and that will be dealt with under special purpose, specific purpose zones uh, chapter. And, um, these are really the main changes as far as the open space is concerned in the central city and chapter 18. Thank you. Can I just ask you about the implications of uh, keeping BRP open for the future as per uh, plans for a recreational area uh, which were in place prior to the extension? Of the, the site is limited still... to the area which is actually used for recycling. So it's, it's a defined area and that'll be mapped on the maps. The other parts of landfill that are not being used for recycling or for recovery um, will be turned into open space. So it's not exactly the same shape as it used to be. So that recreational development post closure was going to happen, that'll still go ahead? The east side of it is going to be rec uh, developed and I believe it is already being developed for recreational purposes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Four point seven nine, and it's um No, it's just the. Um, Where does it start? Yeah. It starts in here. It's 4.73 on the report. Um, 4.72. Yeah. Oh, I beg your pardon. 4.79, sorry. Yeah. And it's recommendation um, 100 and. Um, well, I, I think we'll just start at 4.79. It's a very brief item. Yes, you do need to know. Uh, recommendation. Huge implications. And 119, is it? No. No. Um, but um, in any event, just to um, fill you in on what's happening there, um, the, the council, when it notified um, its um, uh, proposals to the minister, it, or well, it formed the minister, it basically rezoned parts of the basin for uh, a low density residential zone around the end, around the edge of the basin that's not needed Along for the Along the rim of the basin, we'd prefer to refer to it as, around so the that rim. people know that it's high on the right, it's the on higher level. ground. That's yeah. correct. Sorry, it's recommendation not... four on page two of the table of comments. Ah. Roman numeral four on page two of the comments. Under the high level recommendations. Oh, yes, it is too, yeah. yeah. So the, the Minister's response was that um, the, um, that proposal would be contrary to the Land Use Recovery Plan and to the um, Regional Policy Statement Chapter 6 because that area is not inside the urban limits. And that's, and that's correct. The reason it was notified, the reason we put that zoning there were twofold. Firstly, when we did the assessment, we felt that the remaining land outside those areas designated for the um, Northern Arterial Extension and the Stormwater Basin was suitable for some form of urban development. And we antici had anticipated that the, um, perhaps the, the LERP review may have proceeded a little more down the track than it has. Um, but uh, 
clearly that I think the minister has responded in the correct way that we probably have no legal uh, position now to notify any urban development in that area. And so we will be notifying in stage three a, res a rural fringe zone for that area. And no doubt we will get submit, we we'll probably would have received submissions on that seeking a rezoning. Well, we will get a, a, a submission seeking a rezoning when it, we do notify it. And by that stage, things may be a bit clearer with alert, but it's unlikely. Um, the other uh, matters which are of concern here, obviously, are the um, notices requirement for stormwater and the Northern Arterial Extension, both of which have been heard and a decision has, is imminent. Um, and so we can't really rezone anything until the boundaries of those requirements have been defined. And of course, the, the, the other matter is um, the council's recent decision on the long-term plan to um, uh, hold back funding, at least in the interim, to, uh, for the northern um, arterial extension. Now, without that extension, uh, the, um, it's going to be quite difficult to put any urban rezoning around the Cranford Basin because the access into there is quite limited. But we won't be we won't be putting um, we won't be addressing that until. I mean, we've got to wait for the zoning on the designation. I mean, the designation yes, decision do. That's anyway. Right. You do. So um, all that's done is just um, created a new time frame for considering the funding. So that's correct. So we'll get get over that. Um, but the issue for me is that I think that there were people who had a view that because we were going to go down this track, that this was. Um, going to produce a result. So uh, Ali's been in touch this morning, but as I understand it, we have approached as a council the UDS partners to ask them to support a change to the regional policy statement, which would enable an easy, fast-track change to the land use recovery plan. The UDS mm. partners basically came back and said, no, it has to be done within the context of the LERP. And, um, Unfortunately, the LERP process is not the quick and dirty that we'd um, actually expected it to be, given that the LERP's only been in place for, what, two and a half years? Um, and, and I think people expected it to be reviewed after it had been in for a little bit longer, but it was late in its delivery, as you might recall. We signed it off when we got elected, so it didn't mm. actually come into effect until... Uh, late in 2013, and then um, in 2014... Um, I mean, in 2015, we're reviewing it, so actually, it's it's not even um, not even two years in the in the, in its existence. <coughs> but the detailed analysis around the um, around the review has actually slowed things down a, even more. So, um, how is the review of the tied in? Because you can't have a district plan provision that is inconsistent mm. with the LERP. And how is this inconsistent with the LERP? Because we don't have a basis for residential development there. That's it, correct. It's so got to be. It's not, not identified. It's in not identified in the LERP as a place for residential development. So it's only stuff that is specifically identified within the LERP. Because when you well, it's the it, regional policy statement which yeah. has right. been operationalised by the LERP. Yes. So that's fine. I thought that the. But that's why the two are connected. But yes. I thought the LERP identified land in a general sense. No. That there wasn't the specificity that you're suggesting that there was because when you look through the LERP, the qualification for the land that should be included yep. is actually this land. Yes, I agree. And, yeah. But the thing is, is that if we if, if we promote this, then the UDS, I mean, sorry, the Independent Hearings Panel will just say, mm. sorry, it's inconsistent with the Land Use Recovery Plan, which nominates these areas mm. for development. So That's what great. next then? So that so how do we... We have to, um, well, uh, I mean, we, it, anyone who applies for a plan change will come up <laughs> against this problem. So even if we applied for a plan change, even when the people submit against the, um, the designation remaining in the rural fringe or whatever it is, um, they will find themselves up against it. We will continue to work behind the scenes to push for an amendment. But you'll have to remember that UDS partners in other districts would like to amend their zoning as well. Um, and there are elements of... The, there are property owners in our own city who would like to amend as well, but they're not within the loop. 
as you say, this qualifies on every category in terms of transport routes, um, key activity oh, centres, yeah. proximity, the whole nine yards. Um, and, and it wasn't something that could have been promoted at the time of the LERP because it was the designation yes. re-stormwater that actually enabled it to be re-designated as urban. So, so ironically, the LERP, which was to free up land and create more housing and so forth, <coughs> is the abstraction or the juddabar, if you like, on to, this development. On this right. Yeah. Okay. Even though, it, and the point is, is that we couldn't have put it in the LERP at the time because it wasn't in the regional policy statement, and even not being in the regional policy statement wasn't a barrier to people getting into the LERP, um, as as we saw. But the designation re-stormwater is what made this fit for urban development. And once that was resolved, then you know we really actually had the basis for the, the residential. So in a way, we have to accept this advice. It's, um, we don't have to be happy about being in this position, but we do have to accept the advice. Um, and what we can do um, is continue to work behind the scenes with both ECAN and with Sarah to see if we can get um, some movement and potentially other UDS partners to see if we can get some movement on the regional policy statement and then subsequently the LERP. Mm. Do we have to notify this now? Can we hold it back? No, no, no. I mean, we're notified as it is. There's no, there's no point not notifying um, the land. It's going to have to go through a plan change. We can't not notify it. There it's got to be classified as something. There are a number of people there that are quite agitated about the whole thing that's been flip-flopping for God knows how long. Mm. Um, what if the minister intervenes? Can he override it with the CERA Act or not? Yeah, yeah, he and can. I think that's a but it would have to go through, it would have to be in the loop. He's got to have a legal basis for it. You know, the, the use, you know, and he's, he's had this, um, the use of, what is it, Section 27 yes, powers? That's right. He's been challenged in the court before. And um, he will only utilise that, um, and that would be a mechanism to amend the LERP um, through Section 27, but he would want the sign-off of us and ECAN and the other partners in, to the UDS. He would. Mm. And the other partners to the LERP, who are Waimakariri, Selwyn and um, Naitahu. ECAN, Naitahu. Well, NZTA is not a signatory. No. No. But, but no, no, no. The signatories to the LERP are yes. Naitahu, ECAN, WIMAC, Selwyn, Christchurch City. Yeah. That just seems that it's... Um, it, it's a shame. It's a but, of worms and it's just... Been but a... you know how... You, you, have you ever heard that expression, timing's everything? <laughs> you know, if the stormwater um, issues had been addressed earlier then it would have made it into the regional policy statement. So, because it would have been clear that it was going to be redesignated urban, because it meets all the tests. And the regional policy statement includes the LERP. Yeah? Is yeah, that... the regional policy statement goes back before the earthquake. Yes. Oh, yes, of yeah. 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 So, um, the regional policy statement, um, the UDS, the Urban Design, the development. Urban Development, development Strategy, strategy informed in fact, led to a plan change That's that was being promoted at the time of the earthquakes to the regional policy statement. So the sequence of events is UDS, Urban Development Strategy, that agreed where Greenfields, Brownfields development would be across the Greater Christchurch area. So it included that those outer reaches of Selwyn and, and Wymac, um, Christchurch City across the board. It didn't include Banks Peninsula because we weren't amalgamated at the time. And then the UDS informed um, the, the regional policy statement and all of our district plans. So we had agreed as a council that we would sign up to that and make amendments to our district plan in line with it. The regional policy statement as the overarching document was changed and plan change one, which was the implementation of the UDS on all of those land use issues, was in court, in front of the court at the time of the earthquakes and basically, the land use recovery plan and the section 27 um, uh, designations that the minister made right at the very outset, they were all based on that prior information. And I see, I've always regarded the LERP as operationalising the um, um, 
Clean Ten. Change One. Mm. PC One, yes. Yeah. Mm. So um, and and so now we're in a situation where we can't amend our district plan to be inconsistent with the land use recovery plan. So I mean, it's a it, it is a a, a technical. Um, blockage, and I always think that if there's a technical blockage and there's a will around the table to find a solution, then we should try and find the solution. So I think we have to accept the staff advice that we can't notify against um, the LERP um, unless we notify. Um, I mean, can we can we can we notify against your advice and and accept the it, it's not advised at, at this stage. No, um, because it wouldn't be fair. But it would be no. better that we did, that we notified Rural Fringe, and then those who have interests in the alternative can can make submissions. Rich. Because otherwise, if we if we put up a proposal, then people will think, oh, well, that's okay. That's all going to go through, but it won't. So I think. From what point then in the process do they do that after the loop? Is that then on no, no, no. What we need to do is to say to them they should appeal, yep. but we should continue to work behind the scenes to get the LERP they should, um, amended. They should submit. They, they should just, definitely right. submit yes. to the independent hearings panel. Yep. And we should continue to do everything we can behind the scenes to hurry up that so review. Does the independent hearings panel have the ability to... No. Okay. No. No, but this council has, as a part of this review of the LERP, has indicated in its submission that um, Cranford Basin should be reviewed. Um, but my understanding with the process for the LERP, the Land Use Recovery Plan, is that, that it's, they're using the review to identify areas that need to be reviewed, and then, then it will go through the normal RMA route. So how, long, how long is this process going to uh, I, take them out? Well, if it goes through the RMA route, that's Section 60 of that, you change the regional policy stack, that could be some time. Yes. Um, if it goes through a LERP process, and as Brigitte said, that may not happen immediately either, that is probably the quicker process, but if it goes through an RMA process, it's subject to all sorts of processes and, and appeals, that kind of thing. A LERP process would take roughly... Well, depending on when it started, but it certainly be shorter than going through a six, six a few year. months or a few oh, years. Oh no, it'd be probably six months or something like that, or a the, year. But the minister has to be willing to do that, and my understanding to date is that the process now for this review is more to identify areas that need change, but then to hand it back to an RMA process. But just to, on that, um, surely if we're looking at wanting to review the loop, the, our, our partners, uh, WOMAC and so on may have some changes they want to make exactly. themselves. Exactly, that's right. correct. In which case that may speed the process up. Well, not necessarily. It may actually slow it down because what would need to happen is all of these different areas need to be weighed against each other because the whole purpose of the UDS yep. originally was to stop urban sprawl. It was to try and contain the city. So we'd, we'd want to be careful that that is not uh, uh, undermined so much so that you start getting urban sprawl on various so fronts again. So that's quite a key factor then, isn't it? So us progressing something could have another effect somewhere else. Well, it's just that the city, what the urban development partners are saying is we shouldn't be looking at just one area when there are a number of others that people want to be <coughs> considered as well with respect to opening up greenfield areas. And so that, that's the intention, I think, behind having it go back through an RMA process, rather than just look at Cranford Basin itself. Yeah, it is highly likely, uh, it's racing certainty, in fact, that we're going to get a lot of submissions seeking rezoning at the urban edge, outside the urban limits, and could, that'll could have to be dealt with the package. we just have a very brief memo on how this all sets out and, you know, the implications? Yeah, yeah that would be a good idea. Because I think we, we probably will um, get asked questions about it and it might be good to do a briefing, um, particularly well, I mean, for... I, I have peop know people that live in the area and they're yeah. pestering me, well, not pestering me, they're asking me questions all the time. So it would be very just helpful to... refer them to, to their local to councillors. Pardon? Nothing. <laughs> It would be very helpful to have that. Um, uh, yes. Yeah, no, I think I think all of us of, would appreciate of the that. And something how, something how that we could send out to people so that they can see the situation that we're in. What is the advantage of 
submitting to the hearings panel if there's no... To raise the issue. Right, OK. Yeah, yeah. so okay. people people need to have the issue raised. Yeah, yeah, and it creates and a paper trail in a time frame. It does, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the thing is, is that we're not going to have this hearing for ages, are we, this particular one? Oh, I mean, oh well... Who knows? Yeah. It, it, well, later in the year, yeah, at the earliest. Exactly. So, so the point that I'm making is, is that if we continue to work behind the scenes, and if there were a change, um, you know, between now and the end of the year, when the hearings are held, then that would help. So, I don't discourage people from from making a submission. I mean, that that, that the time frame hasn't changed for the submit for the hearings to be held. Yep. But we've got a bit of work to do to persuade people that this would be. I know. The intention of four to five hundred houses right there where you know, you've got infrastructure. Absolutely. And, and I think when you put it like that, Ali, I'm yeah. sure that it will, you know, I'm sure we'll be able to, yeah, it will resonate in the right places. <laughs> All right, so that's that one. Thank you. And we've got the special. Specific purpose flat specific, land recovery. Sorry, I keep